Okay. I'm sorry. That was something that was asked earlier, and I apologize I didn't finish on that. Asking about communications. How much time do we have? Whatever we want? Okay. Do you want me to keep going? Okay. With regard to communications, first of all, diversify your communications as much as possible. We have shortwave, we have ham radios, which are good, but I would go with older technology. The older the technology that sound, the better. The newer technology, probably most of it, it was made just in the last four years. Much of that already has a clipper chip in it. It already has the technology in the circuits. We know that for a fact. That's been admitted to in many of the trades magazines. But what you need, even the newer stuff would be better than nothing. Uh, what you're looking at is trying to use as many different frequencies as you can. During the siege of Waco, which gives us a vast amount of intelligence data on how they operate, during the siege, they jammed all shortwave and they jammed all ham radio frequencies on site. Now, again, it was a pimple target. In other words, if, I, if you want me to, I can hammer at this desk all day with all of us, and it isn't getting away. When you have to deal with this whole room, and you have to try to deal with every square inch of it, it's a totally different environment. Now, there are some very nice shortwave, longwave, well, you got VHF, UHF, and I think there's also some ultra-low frequency stuff that's ex-military that's hanging around at a couple of the surplus sites. It's virtually new in the box. No, it's not light to carry, but most of this is cheap. If it's cheap, you can afford to burn it, and you won't cry when you leave it. So it's, uh, it's again, it's hands-on, first-phase technology that you're going to use. If you have to abandon it, you will destroy it yourself to ensure that it's not used. For handheld communications, I warn everybody that, first of all, you don't want that much radio equipment out there. You want to know why? Because people abuse it and it becomes a shoot me target. What you need is an absolute minimal amount of communications and most of it has to be word of mouth, direct command, I want this done, you five do it, goodbye. I don't want to see you for two weeks. The reason that has to happen is you also have to have time dilation. People have asked me how long will this last? I originally would say we had anywhere from eight to 10 years. I think we've knocked it down to eight years, maybe a little less. But it's gonna be eight years worth of fighting if this actually breaks out. The reason is because of the vast areas, the types of combatants we're dealing with, and the fact that we also have to deal with production and manufacturing. Communications with, with your couriers is going to be work, out, work like this. A second shall become a minute. A minute shall become an hour. An hour a day. A day, a, a day shall become a week, and a week a month. You're in no hurry to go anywhere. You have all the time in the world. And one way or another, the other side has got an appointment with death. It's just a matter of when he meets your knife. So you take your time, and like you said before, you pick your targets. Now, short-range communications, if there's good discipline, is always, always done with handheld units. And again, uh, you gotta watch it. Squelch will kill you every time. These things are gonna have to be, your people are gonna have to be trained that use them. Now, shortwave uh, transmitters for behind the lines use, if we have a behind the lines. Uh, cellular phones are nice, but they can all be controlled. They're still usable. Strangely enough, well, that is short term, and if we control the area, we'll have them again. It's the, there, there are windows of opportunity, I agree. They've, they've already restricted cellular phones, and cellular phone was the only way that the Davidians called out for three, they made supposedly we either two or three telephone calls by cellular phone, but they didn't have enough batteries. A lot of people buy the technology, but don't buy the capability to run the equipment. I got a nice radio, I don't have anything to run it with. You need batteries, cellular charging, or solar charging, I'm sorry. Another thing is there's a lot of these neat little handheld crank units out there for generating power. Trust me, you got lots of extra bodies for that. You know, the eight-year-old kids want to participate? This is a lot of fun. <laughs> you always see in the old World War II movies the guy cranking the generator. Yes, in the back. Field phones, Field phones work exceptionally well and are economical. The idea is right now that they're not a, they're what we call a drug on the market. They're everywhere. They can be set up economically. They can be shielded, utilizing a variety of different products that are on the market now, so that they they are not going to they're not going to fry on you. Um, long range communications, it's still best word of mouth, but there is going to be a need for a communications net down the road. Buy the technology and take recommendations from the people that are specialists. And again, don't standardize. I gotta remind everybody of that. In your own units, standardize. But for overall units, don't standardize. The reason for that is amateurs are the most dangerous thing on the battlefield, okay? They don't know how to do it, so they're gonna do it the way they find is best. 
what this man does is different from what this man should do, which is different from what that man should do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, with regard to your units. When I was an intelligence analyst, one of my missions is to predict enemy capabilities, weaknesses, strengths, et cetera. To do that, I have to, know, first of all, be able to get good intelligence on you, what your activities are. I collect the data on it, target your actions, identify specific traits, and then I can predict what you do. We do not want predictability. So you have to avoid that at all cost. Now there was another. There was another question you. Uh, I'm sorry. There was another question you asked first, though. When did you realistically, you think that we're looking at a, a 60 day scenario, and basically ask what could be the tripwire from the military? Okay. Uh, probably the best example. The question is, what would be the tripwire for our U.S. military? We already had an experience of this kind in Idaho with the Weaver siege. The Idaho National Guard was called out with several others to attack the Weaver, the Weaver house and to surround it after the initial sniper attacks. The Idaho Guard was actually, well, actually after they found out where they were going and what they were doing in the first 24 hours, refused to cooperate with federal forces. Now they did a passive resistance thing because what the Fed then did they had everybody disarm. What they did is they told it, they, they said it like this, as a show of good faith, the Idaho guardsmen had to lay their weapons down so that they could be deactivated. After they disassembled the internal mechanisms of the rifle, they gave them their weapons back, gave them radios with no batteries, and sent them out into the woods to hills that were nowhere near where the Weaver's place was. In this way, people didn't know that the Idaho guard had mutinied, and they had no idea what activities were taking place which was crucial. Okay, no problem. Yeah, no problem. We can, I'll call in a vote call tonight. Uh oh, looks like we're spending some time here. Um, okay, location as far as the country, I'm sorry. Location as far as the country goes, it is, for, personally, I'm committed to Michigan for a reason. I'll probably be bouncing around when, when things take, take hold. But Michigan for us, is, we think, is, is crucial, not because we necessarily choose to fight there all the time. There's nice terrain. We've got some beautiful, a beautiful situation for the most part. We're fighting there, or we will fight there, because we have to deny the enemy that resource. They obviously consider the Great Lake area a crucial crown gem in the, in the overall victory. The longer that we can deny them the capability to produce what they want to use on you, the better off you will all be. Now, I, do, I pity, I'll give you some ideas, what I have seen strength-wise. I pity any fool that goes into Pennsylvania. I pity because I know they will not come out. And I, have you ever seen Ridge Runners of Pennsylvania? You'll know why. And I've seen the militia, and I know how they're organized. In the, in the Dakotas and out to the mountain states, same thing. You may go in, but you aren't coming out. And if you are, it'll be in little pieces when we decide to send you back out. Yeah, Virginia, West Virginia are beautiful. Again, it varies because remember the Marine Corps. If it, if it, unless it, it, it doesn't, I won't say defect, but if it, if it honors its uh, pledge to the Constitution, the Marine Corps is what secures Washington D.C. And in fact, it is the predominant strength, not the Army. So there's a question about the Marine Corps and how they would side initially. I think if they realized what they were doing, they would not be trustworthy for the New World Order. In the initial stages, remember you also have spooks and kooks. You've got the CIA right there in the in the ba their backyard they will ensure with money that they consolidate some of that area for themselves initially. And they don't, don't plan on staying here. One thing to remember, if things don't look good, these people all uh, leave the AO. I won't use the right term. They're going to DD out of here when the time comes. They'll come back when they think they can pick up the pieces. Now, time frame, uh, as far as response, by what I have seen, the guards and the reserve units have already stated they will refuse in any way, shape, or form to aggress against the American people, period. So there will not be another uh, situation like Idaho. They know that passive resistance is futile, that they'll simply be disarmed, and that then they will still torture, torment, and destroy whoever it is that they're after. They'll just bring other forces in. So there's a commitment, and it is a genuine commitment, to stand against this when it comes. Now, which commands? There are many out there. That's the best I can say, especially right here, right now, the way it is. And we don't talk much about it anyway. And I'm not the only one in touch with them. Trust me, there are many, many other people who are part of this infrastructure. I can't be the linchpin. After all, take one person and we all go. I can't have that. Or... 
I don't think we'll get to September. I'll be quite honest. I, I'll be quite honest that I do not we I do not foresee the and, and then people are going, oh my goodness, we're setting a date. I'm not setting the date. I think the enemy's already set the time. The only thing that's in, they've already set the time that they're going to do what they're going to do. No, it's uh, she. Well, the thing is that she's thinking about going in September, and I just don't think we ha we'll have to wait that long. We won't go to so we won't go to Washington. I think they'll be coming to you. It's just that they, they the whole vision of what I just handed off to him. This executive order tells me that they're in motion. They're in high gear. They are acting now. If they gave you six more months, let me ask you this: They can't give me six months. They can't give us six months. We've been doing this everywhere. Do you realize what we would look like in two years? If we had two years to do it the way we are right now, I mean, I, I could not allude to all of the, to the toys we've, that, we've, that have been developed. I mean, the, the things are out there. God help you when you fight Americans. They're terrible. They use everything as a weapon. You won't be able to walk, squat, or do anything without finding something part, some part missing from your body or some part that you were, was attached to you missing in general. So, yeah. Uh, give me a second. He's been real good in the back there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, first of all, thank you. Take a little water there. Uh, the first question is about euthanasia. Well, of course, we got Dr. Jack in our state, as everybody knows. Everybody always wonders, how is it he's still walking around? It's very simple. The government wants him walking around. It was not a right to death issue. The idea was it was a right of the state to get rid of you issue. And what they were trying to see is, as with a vampire, whether or not, you know, we would let the vampire in. Once you let him in, if you invite the vampire in, you can't get rid of him. You have to kill him. You can't talk him out. We'll see. And in this case, what we're dealing with is the fact that they let this issue come to a head. And if you've ever read what uh, Jack Kevorkian put together, he, he calls what he's been doing negative euthanasia. Negative euthanasia is where somebody comes in and decides they want to do themselves in. You put some gas to them and you, you, they, they kick the bucket and you put them in a box and bury them. He doesn't want to do that. If you as a young man, if your girlfriend left you, he wants euthanasia clinics in every part of the country. And it'll be just like an abortion clinic. They'll tell you that you have a right to life, but since we're not going to argue, uh, you just sign on the dotted line and we'll take care of it. Trust me, it's painless. Just the way abortion clinics right now tell you that you have a right not to have an abortion, there's other help. Okay, sign on the dotted line and get the abortion anyway. We don't want you to stop. With the euthanasia clinic, let's say your girlfriend leaves you, you're all distraught. Oh, I can't live with this. You go to the euthanasia clinic, they read off the government form. Oh, yeah, you have a right to life. You can do this, you can do that. Now sign on the dotted line. And you ask the question, is it painful? Oh, no, no, no. We've never had a customer come back to complain. <laughs> Which is true. And then what he wants to do is this. They take you into another room. They make you brain dead. They incapacitate you. And they set you on the shelf for about two or three weeks while they take body parts off you. You know, take the corneas, take your flesh, take some of your spare organs that you have duplicates of, and ship them out and sell them. This is his idea of what Dr. Jack clinics need to be like. And of course, he'll be the person that led it, so I think his assumption is his name will be on the bill, which it would be. And if he had his way, there wouldn't be any trying to tell you that, yes, there is, there's a higher force than you, that, yes, you will live beyond this day, that you will, we will find a way to help you through this, that we can find people who will help you right here in this room excuse me if need be, they aren't going to have any motive to talk you out of it because they make profit off you being dead. And when they're done, they finish you off, of course, a little knife to, the, knife to the back of the neck or a little extra injection, and they send you off as dog food or whatever. What difference would it make? You're just a carcass to them then. That's already been proposed and it's already been talked about. And the thing is, they just couldn't get the momentum going. You'll notice something. Every one of the lawsuits against Jack Kevorkian, they've all been dropped. He's free and walking around. I should tell you right there. Um, yeah, right in the back, yeah. Yes, uh, I understand there's about three to 5,000 hard force conspirators who have done this to our most great country. Yep. And in your speeches around the country, I was wondering if there's been a groundswell of support and actually going directly to the problem of dealing with these conspirators. Well. Go the, uh, Chain of command? Well, the problem is the idea would work 
were it not for the fact that the the thousand the, the number that they have here are simply the first the first uh, layer of the onion so to speak what they've done and any of the 3000 for instance that we're talking about one third of them have not just good security but in fact are on the move constantly just for that reason an example would be henry kissinger let's say that we assume he's a he's a hardcore member of the now the older ulster crowd of the new world order he's middle management he's not really high he's middle management his security contingent is such, and in fact, they're looking for this threat constantly, that he would be a hard element to destroy. Now, there's still the option, if, it were, if that were the case, to go after their other middle, the next, next level down. But this, again, is going to require an effort uh, that right now is sensitive at best. First of all, I wouldn't be talking about it in, in any circles. It is construed to be, of course, uh, a big negative that they could use under, uh, and I, the, the most common is conspiracy charges. However, I will say this, that of those 3,000, if I have my way, they will be charged with crimes. They will be brought before a court. The treason and sedition is punishable by hanging, and that is the appropriate measure that should take place. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there, if they had their way, would beat these creatures to a bloody pulp and there wouldn't be any way to figure out who they are. Please don't do that. The reason I say this is because historically this nation has experienced this situation for as long as we've existed. Do you not think that our enemy has contingencies so that if they need a corpse, they would have a corpse that look enough like and taste enough like and feel enough like that we'd accept it? We want them living and breathing for the trials so that we can positively, absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, know that we have who we are looking for. I don't want, uh, I, we, don't, we want to abide by the Constitution. We have specific guidelines. There is a proposal that I would make, and, I, and I've said this to other people, and I will say this, and I've said it publicly. I think that we should temper our justice with mercy, and sometimes mercy is more deadly than any practical application of other punishments. There are some people who will be fringe elements who thought they could profit from what's happening and go along with the regime. Those people are traitors or have, have committed treasonous acts, though it would be difficult perhaps to prove them and in fact identify them. In the past we have learned a word. It is called deportation. It is still the best way to punish them that I can think of, but with a different note and a different flavor. We should have a new tablet of stone put in Washington or somewhere in a predominant place, and the names of all those that have been tried for treason shall be, shall be bared thereupon, and it shall be there forever. Never to be forgotten. Those names shall never be allowed to rise again. Don't think your enemy isn't thinking about this, though. So, those that are questionable but could not be brought before the, before the law and properly punished, or could not be punished with execution, shall be deported and their name should also be written in stone. The difference is this. None of their progeny shall ever be allowed to re-enter the United States in any way, shape, or form. And from outside... <laughs> from outside the country, think about it. Their daughters and sons and grandsons and great-grandsons and children will see the growth and the strength of the United States and our prosperity and they shall curse their, their forefathers for the treachery which they committed. And so it should be, yes. That is the best punishment. That is, that is justice tempered with mercy, and it is a punishment that would be passed down through the ages they would never outlive. That for as long as they live, even their forebears would curse their names. And that is an excellent punishment in, in itself. Giving them no properties, letting them, do not let them leave with anything that they possessed here for that is part of the punishment that should be expected. They planned on taking everything that I owned. They planned on taking everything that you own. It should be the same punishment returned. Oh, I gotta be nice. Here, you haven't asked a question before. No, well, the problem with that is, first of all, remember this. Uh, the question is, what about a mass exodus from the United States? Canada will be at war because the Canadians are fed up with this, and they're going to be fighting too. Mexico is already at war and has been at war for the last three months now with no public, public uh, broadcasting with the exception of a few small articles. They've been waging an all-out conflict in most of the provinces. Most of the rest of the, of the Central and South American plate 
is, and it's true, parts of it are 100 years behind us. The only reason they're 100 years behind us is because our spill-off technology is keeping their heads above water. If we fall, and if we were to walk away and this nation were to fall, for a period of time even, they would be a 1,000 years behind us within a very short period of time. An example of this, and this is historical, is to remember what happened after the Great Depression. Before the Great Depression in the Roaring Twenties, Central and South America were boom towns with the same type of crust technology that they have today. After the Great Depression hit, no money was available to play in these second circles, these other environments. And so everything that they built, great opera houses, great storefronts, areas that looked much like Venice, Central Rome, I mean, there were beautiful constructions, fell into total ruin and literally into dust. And they were sent back 40 and 50 years behind where they were sitting at that time, perhaps farther in some, in some cases. We're at the same point with the way this interlocking economy is right now. If this interlocking economy, which they're already saying, is starting to teeter, they're already warning people that don't mess with us or we'll break your back. If they do that, that ripple will go around the globe just as it did in 1929. And it will affect everybody in such a catastrophic way that I, I, I actually do shudder to see what, it, what that would do to some peoples and what populations. They're, even overseas in Europe would not be safe. And remember, the Europeans as a socialist state aren't going to want to see any more of us than they already have. They're already trying to kick everybody else out of their borders right now. Asia, on the other hand, has always had a problem with, with its ethno-sensitivity. Uh, sensi uh, it doesn't want anybody around. Japan doesn't even want other Asian populations around which is understandable, they want to be Japanese, congratulations. If this goes the way we expect, they will have what they want and then some. Because for, theoretically, with the technology being less user-friendly, example, everybody knows how to use this mic. How many people here know how to make this mic? Yeah, just like a lot of the technology, we can play with the computers, how many of us can make the microchips? That pyramid technology is so fine that it would take very little to destroy that veneer. In fact, I've argued this for a long time. I learned from our, from our forefathers from, the, from, the America, from World War II and the American war effort. They stated and categorically that they must diversify their production. We have done just the reverse. We've called, closed everything inward. You know that there are only three plants in this country that make all of the fighter aircraft frames for all of the planes that we make, three. Now let me ask you something. Daddy didn't train no fool. If you were the other side, what would you destroy first? Yeah, one of them. <laughs> That'd be enough. <laughs> yeah, because it's all share time, too. We adopted all this foreign concept of share time, on-time delivery, and what it's done is it's created no reserves. We have no spare parts. If you have a, fa a factory failure, you cannot produce what you need, and there'll be no way to get it for months at a time. Yes, wait a back. One interesting thing, though, I still don't have the printed article on it. I saw it as a blurb. Did anybody catch this major earthquake that we had that was 400 miles below the surface? 8.4 on the Richter scale, right? More devastating than anything we've registered so far. The next day, it was stated that the, that the cause of this may have been the Chinese thermonuclear device that was detonated underground the day that happened. Now, do you realize how big that device would have had to have been that they tested? The Chinese are not out of the picture, and they're part of this next phase with the, tri with the concept of, the, of uh, the balance of power for the new world order. To go the next phase, they need another ultra superpower, and China most assuredly is that. China, to, in my eyes, by the way, is also their chosen puppy. We are not. We are a failed experiment that they are going to do away with. They would prefer the Chinese over us because of the overall social structure that they've already created there. They are decades ahead of where, they, where we are. Now, with regard to tactical nukes, it is very likely that in some areas they'll use them, but there's no saying you don't shit in your own backyard, okay? One of the reasons that they're fighting, oh, I'm sorry. One of the reasons that they're fighting is to grab resources. Thank you. Huh? Well, there's an option, yes. They might, uh, there's a consideration. Urban renewal is only one glass parking lot away. Yeah. I know. That's one of the considerations. And remember, they do want to do away with large elements of the population. And they don't care who they actually kill. Let me, let me put it this way. Remember something. At the World Ecology Conference in the Dakotas, and I have it on tape at home, and I don't have it here with me, 
they stated, and I'm using the Rockefeller, not Rockefeller, Rothschild's terms, when, their words, not mine, when they get rid of the cannon fodder, you know, 75% of the American people, then they would be able to bring in the people that they wanted. Now what that means is right here, right now, three quarters of us are dead. Three out of four of us standing here aren't supposed to be here in the next 10 years, period. They don't care who it is. In fact, they'll be pretty indiscriminate, I think, with a lot of it. They just have to get rid of us because we are not manageable. And like I said, their consideration is you're all a failed experiment. You're all a negative as far as they're concerned. First of all, we're too, we're too uppity. We're too bullheaded. We're certainly intelligent. I mean, we've given the chance in the proper school systems, and if we do it right, we can produce one heck of a product, and we know it. We've done it. From going to the moon, well, we can argue plus or minus on that one, and whether or not we did it, of course, I've heard that argument, all the way to building some of the finest aircraft and finest ships on the planet. That requires tremendous skill, and we have it. And microprocessing on down, we invented it. They just keep stealing it, that's all. Yes? They didn't want to cause a financial collapse in this country or all over the whole world. And my second question is, uh, when the proverbial hits the fan, what do you think their response to the uh, sector of media is? Okay, I'm sorry. First of all, was do I think there's going to be a world economic problem? No, I got the question you saying that you didn't think that they were that. Oh, no, no, they do. No, I think, no, they do. I'll give you an idea of the overview of the strategic concept, and some of the people have argued this, and it makes sense. The reserve notes that we have in our pockets are temporary. The next step is the currency that they're coming up with, which everybody's seen in the media now. How far away? Well, they said by the end of next month they could have it in place. And they're already going to start pulling the $100 bills. And it will, there will, there, if they, right now they were talking about, well, in other countries, they have exchange rates. In this country, we haven't done that yet. But if this country hasn't had the national debt that Puerto Rico and Bolivia and all the others had 20 years ago when they did devalue their currency because their money is worthless. Now, and people asked about that. That ties in this whole thing about the economic collapse. Or if there was going to be one, how would you use it? They have not been able to use it because a lot of us have been, have been standing around with our act together for too long. A lot of people did store food. A lot of people do have survivalist traits. That's just being American. Traditionally, we know what it's like to go without food. A lot of our people have come from places on the planet where there wasn't any. So we are smart. We're intelligent enough to figure on thinking for the future. It's that old parable thing. Remember the ant and the grasshopper? Uh oh, you're not supposed to think that way. That's common sense. Well, a lot of our people have been doing that, so it's been hard. It's, again, it's been a hard nut to crack because it does not have to be the majority that are prepared, just a very strong element. If you can get the whole population to starve, you can lead them around by the end of their nose. But if a people can eat, they will make sound judgment, not with their stomach, but with their mind. So again, the first thing to do with your money, which we talked about, I'd convert some of it into food. That's cash on hand. You know, somebody said, I got gold. Gold's nice, have some of that. Silver's nice, have some of that, but can you eat it? Because if, if you've gone past the monetary system for a little while, it still comes down to what people have been arguing for years. Wheat is still a bargaining chip. Corn is still a bargaining chip. A can of beans will go a long way when somebody's hungry. A can of beans could buy an automobile by the time you're done. Or a coat or a pair of shoes or whatever you need will barter. The other thing is, how can you protect the money in other ways? Well, first of all, the sharks diversify. They don't stick into any one camp. Rockefeller's not just tied up in one mechanism. He's tied up in thousands of things. The, the other thing you can do is, is for as a stopgap that you can all do, and it doesn't cost you anything, is just plain pocket change. The most recent example of that is when Israel converted its currency back in 72. They didn't tell anybody, oh, everything's fine. Everything's OK. Money changes tomorrow. Well, the day before it happened was Sunday. Nobody could go anywhere to get anything. Congratulations, you're out of luck. You didn't have time to get what you needed. But if you had pocket change, you ate the next day. Because the coin, this costs money, and I don't even have any in my pocket. Oh, well. <laughs> See, I'm poor. Um, the, coin is, the coin still had a value because it's expensive to remint. But paper, well, that's just like this photocopy right here. Come on, congratulations, we'll make 400 more tomorrow. They could print paper all they wanted. And so a lot of people who, do, who were in the know, who did listen to the indicators, bought a lot of coin and rolled change. 
and they were actually able to make their house payments they were actually able to pay for their food they actually were able to have electricity in their home because when your debt change okay when your when your money changed at a 6 to 1 ratio the debt did not this also happened in germany after world war 2 in 1945 the bankers wanted to suck the, the germany dry the rest of the way so what they did is they had a currency change the currency exchange rate was as high as 11 and 12 and 14 to 1. But the debt range change was 1 to 1. Now try and think about this. You get to choose between heating and eating. Take your pick. It's the middle of a German winter, and you have to either pay for the, make the house payment, and you can only have 1 14th the purchasing power you had before, but your debt's the exact same level it was. Within two years in Germany, 72 to 75 percent of the private property was in the hands of the banks and the people were paupers on the streets that they originally had built in in israel with the situation with the currency exchange people lost their houses people lost their cars people went without electricity because they did not have the money to pay for the normal everyday debts that were necessary there we go thank you very much and that's the problem here well let's, let's illuminate that one why is it they haven't gotten away with this? Because some people say, well, boy, we've been talking about this for years. Yeah, and we still have our guns, too. And the rule number one, as you said, possession is nine-tenths of the law. I'm not giving anything up. So you can walk in with that piece of paper that says that Bolivia or China or, the, or Belgium owns Michigan. Come on and take it. I'm standing on it. You're not. That paper's worth, well, let's see, you got some Charmin over there? I'll trade you. And they know it too, and that's why, again, let's go full circle. What you just said uh, makes sense when you look at why they're attacking the guns. With the guns gone, you can foreclose on the mortgage. You can confiscate the car. You can take the mink somebody can't pay for anymore. That's why they're doing it, because it's the way they get into every country they've ever been in like this. Way in the back. She's uh, I'll, I don't know. I haven't heard that, but he almost looks dead most of the time. Like I said, rigor mortis has set in. When he was sitting next to Hillary, he didn't look too healthy to me. The question was whether or not Alan Greenspan may have actually already died. I, I don't know. He's, he's all wrinkly and pruny, and he wears a suit and kind of sits there most of the time, and only his lips move. I could do that with a doll, you know. So uh, it's possible, but more likely he's very much alive and just a belligerent and obnoxious problem. As we all know what he's been doing with the interest rates, They've been, they certainly aren't worried about inflation per se. What he's doing is putting a little crimp in the economy so it doesn't run away too quickly and do very well. They need to be able to keep it right on the edge so they can belly it over quickly. And that's only going to take one little push when the time comes. And they're, they've got to, remember all this is like, it's like dealing with a team of six horses and two of them are hard chargers. They've got to keep trying to hold them in, in rain and manage them until they get to the finish line. And when they do, they're going to bust them all loose for that last burst of energy 75 yards away and go for the gusto. That's what they're doing now. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. That's a good question. Thank you. The question was, has there been a plan or is there a plan for coining constitutional money? An organization that did succeed to a certain extent with this is, and of course are still printing coin, and again this comes back from the early to middle 80s, was the Committee of the States. Uh, there were 14 to 16 member representatives. They actually held a, uh, held a meeting of the committee, which is the first step towards our union. The Committee of the States was never, was never dissolved. The federal government charged them with conspiracy though. Typically again they tried to do it with paper. The uh, government charged them with conspiracy. The 14 people who were in uh, the management positions were taken to a military facility and over a two-year period were put to trial. All of them were found innocent, but it collapsed the system. There is a consideration, and many patriots, and there's a lot of maybe in here who are participating in it, who are already involved in working with silver bullion, as in round coin, you know, rounds, one-ounce rounds, troy ounces. We all, first of all, in order to get back to legal tender, have got to go back to the proper weights and measures that go along with it. And that's very important. Yes? Right. 
Right, it has the specifications were laid down. Yes, I agree. But you have to have the raw material. That's the best way to draw on the raw material in reserve and storage. Um, well, yeah, there's one other thing about that. That is a consideration for the time being. Remember that non-Federal uh, Reserve money is coin money. All of our silver coin, uh, all of our old silver coin, we never paid a single debt on. That was our money right from the beginning. And your, your government stamped it, and it is still yours. So I'd highly recommend putting a percentage of coin silver away. It doesn't have to be collectible. As much as anything else, it simply has to be spendable. Because when the time comes and he has a loaf of bread to sell, is he going to be able to relate to the denomination I have here, and can I use it? Can we come up with a negotiable substance or a way to negotiate and transfer resources and money and food or whatever? That's the problem. We're going to have to come up with a whole new system. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> really, you get to enjoy life again. Yes? When there's full engagement with the enemy throughout the country and with the other countries in the world to see what's going on, do you expect a foreign invasion? That's what this will be. I, okay, thank you very much. I'll clarify that. I'm sorry. There's the, the idea of what I see partaking here is that you will see a facade for only a short period of time that this is a an American affair. But if our American forces decide to stand free and, and with the Constitution, they will have no choice but to rip the mask away. And you will see the true enemy in, in, incarnate there before you. What will happen is the foreign forces that are already here are already wearing the black uniform. They're already wearing the ski mask. They have no insignia. They have no rank. There's no way to tell who they are. I've argued this for years. That what is the difference between the knock at the door at 11 o'clock at night with black leather and a coal scuttle helmet or a KGB, KGB uh, helmet with a pepiish and a guy coming to your door at 3 in the afternoon with a black ski mask. None whatsoever. The idea is terror. And also, it has to be anonymity. They have to have the eyes as the only symbol of power. That's the all. What is, what is the key to the soul? What are the windows of the soul? So what are they going to let you see? The soulless person that's standing before you, and that's why all you see are the eyes. Then otherwise, what you see is black, the mantle of death, and you're going to see legions of them. Even their vehicles are black. Even their equipment's black. And the reason is that overall impression. Now, it's a sharp color, i got to admit. Okay, sorry, guys, it is. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's a uniform. We're going to have it used. We're going to use the components of it. We're going to use some of the equipment. But with regard to what these guys are doing, in fact, I'll pull the stuff off of myself as long as I can clean it up, okay? But with regard to what their concept is and how they came up with this idea, this is what they were looking at. How are you going to terrorize people at 3 in the afternoon instead of 11 o'clock in the morning when you're on the street? That's how they're going to do it. Everybody here who was a soldier in the 70s will recall that we were trained to shoot at people with ski masks, weren't we? Now they work for the government. Isn't that alien? Way in the back, yes. Actually, before we even get to that, that executive order that was just generated as of the 3rd incorporates the Department of Agriculture to restrict the transfer of food and foodstuffs. So it's already in the executive order. Huh? And fertilizer? I didn't get a chance to read it all. That makes sense, though. Because, remember, the power to produce, as I said before, if you, you know, the power to, if you, can, if you control the food, you control the people's hearts and minds, because their stomachs will follow. And if you control how to produce it, the water, fertilizer, etc., you're going to make sure that there's no competition for the government-run operations that are taking place. So that, oh, now we don't want to mention that right here, right now, but I understand what you, yes, I agree. Yes, fertilizer is our friend. A 50-pound bag and a little extra oil and we're all set. Yeah. A copy of it right now, what I would recommend, there are two ways to do this. Now, at this time, the Schumer, uh, the committee is, is being run by Schumer. Out of Washington, you should be able to access the number. I don't have it here. And through his office, you should be able to acquire a copy that will be generated from the Federal Register. You'll probably have to ask for a copy of the Federal Register on the date that they were working on it because they will not probably have received a copy from the GPO, Government Printing Office. So it would be the Federal Register itself because the scribes take all the information down right there, and it's on hand. Yes? Is the third, is the Federal Register, 
It is. I'm sorry. I wasn't. Yeah, you remind me. Okay. Thank you. That's good. Okay, right here. Yes. Well, there's a balance here. Number one, they know that some of the activities are taking place, and they don't necessarily mind the idea of us going to Washington. That's an awful long road, and they control the, that backyard. Personally, like I said, the eye, the heart was right. The mind is not properly. It's a little not askew, but it's just it's just improperly in gear. We'll go to Washington. We'll go to Washington eventually, but it'll be on our terms. Again, there, there's, a, there's a bit of a problem. Okay, one of the things that they, they have, they, I won't say they can't do it, and everybody, it's, it's the same problem they have with me and some of the other vocal speakers. Uh, Jack McClam, uh, McIlvaney's in the same situation. We're so public, and they're, so, they're not sure how people would respond to an attack. And in fact, I'll be quite honest, don't, don't bother me for the time being, and they might live in peace a little bit longer. And it's that not all, but not everybody's going to rise up and help Mark. But we have agreements. I also agree that if somebody does anything to any of our people, that that is the line that will be crossed, and that we will initiate activities. Period. That is not as uh, not as a covert terrorist, but purely as a militiaman defending the Constitution and defending our people, and that's very, very important right now. Well, thank you. Did everybody get a chance to look at this? Oh, okay. Well, here we go. Go to the other side. Here we are. We won't leave without it. Um, now, as far as that goes, again, I, I guess we have to, if you get a chance, I'll try and find the information. Linda's information on the subject, on why, why she did what she did, the man who came up with the work is sound. The problem is he's dealing from the administrative uh, perspective, and we're past, I think, the administrative for the most part. I still write letters, by the way. I still call because I'm obligated to do so, to explain to them that if they do this, it is an act of war. That's all that I do, though. If you pass, this is dangerous. You will, you're, going to, you're going to get somebody killed, and it's not going to be my fault. It's their fault because they're, un, they're acting in an unconstitutional manner, and we will, have, we will have no other redress but to fight. And they know that, too. But they're trying to pick a time that will be advantageous for them. We'll balance that out, too. Way in the back, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that would make a great deal of sense, and in fact, uh, the, fa the, the very idea that they're even here is amazing to me, considering our lack of enthusiasm for international soccer, if you know what I mean. We're, it isn't exactly priority on America's list, but they're trying to make it that, because that is the, yes, like the Olympics. The... Um, there has been some discussion about that because protection elements from the different nationalities have been brought in. And I think the only, th the only thing, the only good part about that is that some of them are very specialized units that probably won't be kept here. They're needed as a Praetorian Guard for their own regimes. Now the lesser elements and the bulk forces that they bring in, there'll be some, those probably will stay. Anything that they can bring in, it's like I said, anything they can put in uniform and any way that they can justify or excuse putting a gun into, a, into somebody's hand with a uniform right now, they will. Anything. The Postal Service is being armed. I mean, they've already got the contingency set up for that. We, the Postal Service. Under Peel 100-690, it allows for a contingency, and it's probably in the executive order. I haven't looked yet, which authorizes that the Postal Service, your, your local postman, can be armed and is, in fact, a law enforcement officer in, uh, in form in that if he identifies any activity in your property, he's to report to his superiors, da 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 It has all kinds of guidelines. It's already in place. And in fact, of course, we always wondered about that. You know, the post office does have a SWAT team now. There's a postal SWAT team. Yeah, you know what they look like? They've got black, uh, black uh, postal shorts with the black socks and the sneakers. <laughs> they got this big black leather postal bag. You remember, did you ever see the Three Days of the Condor? And he's got this pasty white complexion. He wears this coal scuttle, of course, Kevlar helmet. It says the mail must go through on the side. He carries a Mac-10. I've seen this. The Inspector General's office is being armed? 
Well, that would make sense. And what the, the comment was made here is that the Inspector General's Office of the Labor Department, they're being required to carry firearms also now. So again, everybody will be shooting at you. Oh, well, what the heck, we shoot back. Oh, wait a minute, he was, okay. Do you have any Okay, if you don't feel comfortable, one of the things I've told everybody, like I said, some people get good response, others get bad. I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm blessed right now. Everybody's come around it's, that I know, so I don't even worry about it anymore. Everybody, all my relatives are like, oh my goodness, because they've been around me enough to know that first I was crazy and later on that we were telling the truth. That's scarier still. But what's interesting is I, what I've done very quietly with some people is just leave it anonymously like I would with anybody else. Just leave it on the car, on the windshield. Leave it in the, uh, in the uh, uh, mailbox. Leave it somewhere where they can take a look at it. And if they, if they get it, you'd be surprised. A lot of times they'll come back and go, oh, you'll never know. You'll never guess what I just got. Have you ever heard about this before? And it'd be like, oh, well, really? Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, as a matter of fact, here's some more. And once you know how the water feels. All long, all long distance telephone communication is, is monitored and intercepted. As of 1981, one of our people was with uh, Defense Intelligence Agency when they hardlined all of the overseas and in-country uh, long-distance lines with the old cable system. Now, that's 81, and we're talking now 13 years ago. I think you can all use your imagination and, and figure out what kind of technology is out there. We've seen most of it. Almost all of you have caller ID if you want it now on your own phones, and if they have it there, how long do you think the government's had it? They didn't have to worry about you staying on the line. That was for propaganda purposes in Hollywood. So what I would recommend is use simple, is, is use caution. Uh, again, be very direct. Keep your conversation short. Again, I would also use key phrases to identify particular whole comments. And in fact, phonetic coding is still a very good idea. The only people that know the, excuse me, know the code are you and me. And it doesn't seem strange to anybody else when they hear it. Yes. They, they, my, my vocal cords are like nobody else's, the same as yours and everybody else, yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, wait. Oh, okay, the question is that the Chinese were supposed to have come into Florida and that there were terrorists involved. Well, I'm not sure about that. We had some reports on activities that had taken place uh, I've experienced myself when, uh, while in Florida, actually talking with Chinese and Korean crews uh, at port of, uh, not port of entry, but at docking facilities out away from the mainland where I've been fishing, etc. You, know, you get a chance to talk to some people sometime when you're docked up. Um, the Chinese, it is not unlikely, have a large number of personnel that they've brought in over a period of years that, yes, could be used for covert activities. See, that's another problem is balancing this out. Our enemy is going to create a great deal of confusion just because of that. The other side, we have external forces that would like to eat our lunch, would like to come in and visit. Um, not the least of which would be the Chinese would like to just neutralize us. On the other hand, I don't think the Chinese perceive the American population as the big threat. I be quite honest, uh, the Chinese also understand there's a big ocean between the two of us. And it's the New World Order crowd, mostly out of Europe, that they're worried about. Now, as far as activities where the Chinese go, we have heard some things, but more what we've heard about are our foreign military forces in Florida. And we have good first-hand accounts of actual movements taking place and photographs. In fact, uh, there was a packet that was given to us here that had the T-72 in it. I think everybody saw it. But uh, that's just an example. We've seen Frog 7s, uh, free rocket over ground, uh, tactical nuclear delivery systems on flatbeds, have photographs of them, the whole nine yards. Yes. Probably both. Well, we want, we're calling it the regime that's presently in power is letting them in because their strings are being pulled by the New World Order. So, yeah, they're, our own people are letting them in. It's kind of like the bombing in New York, okay? Think about this. The bombing in New York would not have taken place were it not for the fact that the informant that was working for the United States government decided to teach the bombers how to drive the truck that they had to use because they didn't know how to drive it. So in other words, if our own government hadn't trained the bombers to do what they were able to do, they would never have bombed anything in the first place. And it's already been shown in the court that, they, uh, that, the, uh, that the, the people who were going to do the bombing had actually thrown their hands up in the air and were ready to go back over to the Middle East. 
and at the behest of the informant who was being prompted by the federal government, they kept them there, got them to make the bomb, got them to go in and use the bomb. So as we've seen in the past, it doesn't surprise me. A little variation on that. When I was on active duty, and we were given briefings on all kinds of terrorist organizations, some I question now anyway, but one of them was the uh, FALN, Puerto Rican Liberation Front. Has anybody ever heard of it? Okay. Puerto Rican Liberation Front is a handful of bodies. There's no more than 36, maybe 37, that were ever real hardcore members. We were given dossiers, files, reports on these people literally uh, shit showering and shaving. We knew what they were doing from day to day. I saw whole portfolios. We were told not to touch or interfere in any way, shape, or form with these people, even if we caught them in the act of, of some form of aggression. They had performed over 8,000 bombings in the United States over a 10-year period when I was in. They had been responsible for several very successful multiple bombings. One was in Chicago. 11 different shopping malls were bombed simultaneously, and it didn't even get national news coverage. That's where my, my little mind here started to, the brain gear started to go back then, because it bothered me. First of all, this doesn't make any sense. Why aren't we stopping these people? Well, because we need thesis, antithesis, synthesis. We create the problem, demonstrate the problem, and come up with a solution we wouldn't have accepted. Interestingly enough, uh, at one point in time, we caught the leader of this ring. You know how they caught him? In Boston, he was making bombs in one of these sandstone front seven-story buildings in the basement. They had 700 pipe bombs put together, and one of his henchlings made a mistake and set off one which set them all off. When they caught this guy, he looked like he was put together with a Singer sewing machine. He did. He was, he was the guy, when they finally got him, they, they had him in a hospital prison ward for a couple of days. And there was a picture of him in the file. He had what looked like sewing machine marks over his whole body where they had stitched him all back together. He'd lost all of these fingers. This arm was torn in half and was just basically all just, just bone. This part of his hand was ripped off also. This man supposedly, on his own power, escaped from the second floor of a maximum security facility on his own power without keys. Now, you explain that to me, you know? Excuse me? You know? He couldn't even use the doorknobs. So what happened? Well, obviously, they didn't want him talking, and they got him out of the way. To this day, he's still free. I have never heard of any accounting of him ever being captured. And you would think he'd kind of stand out in a crowd. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Here, yes. Okay. A few weeks ago, I heard a blurb on the news about joint U.S. Russian maneuvers. Yes. And the Russians countered that they would do it if they could do joint maneuvers in this country. We expected that to happen. We talked about this months ago that they would flip flop this because the Russians are already here in, in some numbers. Uh, what they did is, again, sampling the water to see how the American people would respond. They were very honest. It's just behind the times. They've already been bringing them in. In fact, we don't know exactly what the full strength is yet, but we know that it is probably tens of thousands just of Russian personnel. They have been participating in Fort Benning on regular activities. The most recent accounting that we have, which will be a person-to-person -person accounting when I'm done, is that they did bring an element into Fort Benning and that the Special Forces officers who were involved refused to participate with the activity. Three lieutenants, three majors, and a lieutenant colonel are up on charges. The lieutenants are the only ones that apparently are going to be, uh, they're up on courts martial because they, they argued that their, their uh, position as, const as uh, constitutional soldiers, they would not participate with Russian forces under arms in the United States. So they're bringing them to court now because of that, because they were good patriots. Uh, the young man against the wall first, he was being good. What kind of, okay, question is what kind of fronts and businesses would support the New World Order? Well, they're pretty diversified, actually, but they've definitely been into money changing for a long time, obviously, the banking system. You see a lot of banking operations that support them. Um, you're also seeing in the bonds and stock market, many of the people who deal in paper, not all of them, but many of them. God bless. We'll see you in a bit. But it's still a predominant number. There's still a predominant number in financing. In fact, it's amazing. I've never attacked personally any particular element, but I've gotten a heck of a lot of heat off the wall.
because we've been attacking the New World Order and we've never singled anybody or any particular group out. It's interesting who comes out of the woodwork to try and support the New World Order by trying to counter whatever it is you're saying right now. That actually is the best way to do it, is the best litmus that I've found. Because they're in all walks of life. They recruit from many areas. The only thing in the military that's consistent is that they recruit from command and control in the military. Uh, example is, and I hate to break anybody's uh, uh, opinion of anybody, but Schwarzkopf uh, is affiliated with the CFR, Council on Foreign Relations. Colin Powell is affiliated with the Council on Foreign Relations. And Colin Powell, what that means is he was taken off to the side for one year. He's given a leave from the regular military, and there he is trained by the CFR politically before they let him come back into the military again. Now, not all of our generals are trained that way. Only some of our generals are trained that way. And they don't, get all, they don't pick all of them. A lot of your guard generals are good, good uh, patriotic men who have served honorably in the armed forces and who are simply in command of line infantry units, communications, command and control, etc. They do not believe in, nor will they follow these people. But the important thing, remember, while they're not going to follow them right now, if they disarm them and if they deactivate the guard units, what do they have to fight with? If they keep taking their planes away, if they keep taking their tanks away, nothing is what they're doing. He Right there, over the front. Uh, these people are left here are diehards, and they're going to run out of. <laughs> the substitute that was passed on to me at the end about an 85 year old, they tried it when he was 10 years old. The substitute for black powder is pine pollen. Pine pollen. Brown charcoal. Okay. I don't know the proportion. Try it out. Research in the backwoods, Research. away from the house. Okay, we got it. Yeah, okay, let's go. Yeah, okay, here, right in the, no, in the back first. And then you, okay. Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, we'll start from the top. You asked, with the crime bill, as we stated, the existing crime bill bans meetings like this from taking place. It does. And in fact, Schumer's office stated that very little that was in the crime bill was going to be ejected from it at all. All they were doing is meshing the two, which we've originally been arguing for a long time. With this, any meetings of this type would be automatically a felony. Your cars could be, repos could be, could be confiscated. They could go to your home and take your property. In other words, they're going to try and terrorize us into shutting our mouths. That will happen. Radio pro programming, let me give you another example. Uh, I'll try to keep it brief because we've got to get everybody out of here and get them home so they can at least get some sleep tonight, kind of, um, sort of. With regard to radio transmissions, I warned everybody about this, that after the Weaver campaign, when they attacked the Weaver household, that they would shut down shortwave radio. We argued that probably within seven days, no more than seven, probably five, after they shut down the radio nets, you would see the attack on Waco completed, the second one. Sure enough, within, within a 48-hour period, virtually every shortwave Patriot program was burned down. Anybody remember that? They all went offline. They were all knocked down in different ways. Now, what happened is it virtually shut the voice of live radio well, they shut it down for, for three months. In some cases, it took almost five months for them to come back online. Now, we warn people about this, so there's now some redundancy, and we've got auxiliary support, so we make sure that one way or another the word will get out. But it's going to happen in a more aggressive manner when they implement the rest of the MJTF operations. The way that this will happen is the FCC, if all else fails, will just come in and confiscate the equipment. Remember, Brother, uh, Brother Stair has had equipment confiscated off his ship transmitters, which are at sea in international waters. And they've still gone out and taken them from him. So shortwave, while it's still a good option, and in fact, I believe it, people don't understand, you could all have a shortwave station. It's not that expensive to buy time on a shortwave program. It's really quite reasonable when you consider one transmitter talks to the whole world, not just to one part of the world, but you literally, that bounces all over the planet. When we spoke on shortwave, think about this, People in England hurt us. People in Africa hurt us. People in Asia hurt us. And that's, that is damaging because you know what scares them more than anything else in the New World Order is the fact that other people are communicating. They know that there's a resistance movement in the United States and that we're not going to put up with our freedoms being, being stomped on. And that's what they're scared now. That's why the shortwaves are going down. 
Another short example of that, remember when they did come back online, they didn't get the same frequencies they were on, did they? Why? They gave them, yeah, they gave them poor quality frequencies they could more easily jam and control because the old ones actually were pretty decent and nobody had any idea who it was that was applying for the permits when they originally got those transmitters. Now they know who they are, so they, they knocked them down into a lower frequency range in a transmitter range where, they, where many of the new radios have a difficult time picking up the frequencies. Now, as far one more question, part of the question I have to answer here, and then I'll, I'll we'll go ahead and take you. Well, actually, wait a minute, I'm going to be fair and take him, and then I'll take you, okay? With regard to who, who they'll attack, remember, we're talking house-to-house -house search and seizure. They won't care. They're actually talking about going counties at a time now. They're talking about shutting down a county and going door-to-door. -door. That's what Benson was talking about. So they are not going to worry about being too selective with regard to, I want this man. They'll get him and shotgun the area to see if they can get anybody else in the process. That'll vary depending upon their requirements and needs, too. If they just wanted him, they might just single him out and make an example. That's possible. Okay. No, we got only a few. Okay, now these guys were really patient. Two more questions. Yes. You uh, uh, said there were beats in the paper movement and there were things in the victories. Yes. And what do you really think about Rush Limbaugh? Oh, I'll start with Rush Limbaugh. On the one hand, you'll remember with radio formats, I'll take anything, uh, in fact, take anything you can that's an open calling program and use it. You have to tailor it sometimes because they refuse to let you speak on all subjects, but you can at least get the word out. Do all the damage you can, even if it's not a friendly radio station, call in and create turmoil. That at least ties them up so they're not busy with their agenda, okay? Because they'll have to react to you. Not, not, we, we respond, they react. So that's what he was asking earlier about whether or not we should react or respond. We're responding, we think, when we attack. Rush Limbaugh, what we call him in plumbing circles, is a check valve with a diverter to the left. Okay? In other words, what, what's happened is he's friendly opposition. He gives you enough to make you feel good. Okay, boy, I can relate to that. But if you'll notice, when you start to touch on key subjects, he'll slap you down so fast and make your head swim. There's a reason for that. He's in the rock. He, that's right. He ridicules it. Is that sound journalism and is that sound broadcasting? But it helps to create confusion. And what's happened is he is allowed to let you whine, let you complain, let you cajole, whatever you want to do, but don't talk about a solution. He wants you, well, it's a whining program. But in addition to that, what it does is this, and I listen to this myself, and I, and I wish to God I'd had a recorder in my hand, but I was on the road. Early in the morning, when he did, his early, when he, he did the early program, I'm sorry, it was late night program, some gentleman on there was beautiful. He knew how to use words, and, and, and Rush let him talk. And he had a beautiful, deep, resonant voice. And he starts talking about NAFTA, and he brought point after point up that was negative, and, and Limbaugh couldn't argue it. And then finally says, and you know, of course, this is all a socialist operation. These are all socialists we're dealing with. Limbaugh went into a diatribe for 17 minutes about the glories of socialism. Yes, he did. And we could probably get, I don't know if they'll offer t copies of the tape, but I listen to this and it's like he goes, socialism's not so bad. That's what he was saying. Is socialism not so bad. We deal with socialist countries all the time and socialism actually is pretty acceptable if you do this and that, da, 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 da. Well, what it is, he got off on this little tangent. He actually gave you more of their agenda than he should have. So what I said, he's a check valve because we're creating friendly opposition. You and I aren't supposed to go anywhere else. Rush is our only choice. No. Ditto, ditto. You see? By him being the only choice, anybody who's outside his curriculum then must be a radical. See, now he's not a, he's not a right wing. He says, I'm extreme white wing. No, he's not. He's a centrist at best, if not more to the left. If you listen to what he talked about NAFTA, he was fully in favor of NAFTA. If you try and talk about the New World Order on the Rush Limbaugh program, say the words once. Call in tomorrow. Try it. <laughs> That's what he'll do. He'll stomp on you. He will, like you said, he will beat you into a bloody pulp on the radio for an hour if he can and keep going back to you as a reference. It's because, and, and even though George Bush, his person, his hero, is the person who brought it up, they aren't going to stand on it for very long. They have to control, and then they want to try and incorporate new thoughts. Not only are we going to keep you in check, but, well, aren't you willing to compromise on this? Won't you come a little ways to the left on this and maybe a little farther? And maybe a little farther. And by the time you're done, you're left of Lenin. You know, so. Yes.
And Phil Donahue is about as socialist. He's one of the worst leftists we've got. Yes, and who owns the building? The Rockefellers. Rockefellers. He's in the EIB network building, remember? Oh, Patriot Victories, thank you. We'll never hear about them, but I do believe there have been several. Example, they have been uh, providing helicopter cover for convoys on the ground in Ohio now, for the black convoys, for units that are all black vehicles with some military units attached to the military equipment attached, transporting black APCs, etc. We've seen a couple of incidents of this that have been accurately reported and followed for many miles. In fact, the whole width of the state. Now, that requires a little effort for a helicopter to maintain a, you know, maintain a uh, consistent ground speed and then still provide security in a good envelope for convoys. There are other military actions that, are we, that if they were to take place, the reason I say this is that if they were to take place, we have no conduit to announce. And another thing is we're not going to tell anybody. You'll hear about it later because we don't need to, nobody really needs to know. Example, when somebody asked about, like, uh, the other day about this where I said the, that the shortwave programs burned down, the best covert warfare operation is one that is never detected. And they said, well, it was an accidental fire. Something happened where some wires were crossed. Well, the building was a brand new building, only a few years old, for instance, for uh, Chuck Harder. And yet, needless to say, we had this terrible electrical problem. Well, that's what you're trained to do in clandestine warfare, is go ahead and do the, do the dirty deed and make sure it looks like it's something else. The best laid covert action is one that you'll never detect. Yep, OK. Last question, and we've got to go. Yes, uh, a similar technology is available to the TV right now that they actually were talking about where they, they won't admit they can see you, but they will admit they can tell how many warm bodies are there and even if fluffy or puffy are on the floor there in front of the TV watching it also, as in the kitty and the dog. And even though, of course, what you're watching, because yes, they can identify it by frequency with the to tra with the transceiver that's there. Actually, it's a receiver, but it has transceiver capability. It's just not being used. It's cheaper just to make the whole circuit and exclude half of the half of the assembly, which is normally what they do. Okay. Well, I think I've talked everybody's ear off. That's good enough. And then some. If there's any questions that you have, or if there's any information that you need. Feel free to get hold of us or contact us. We do have, we did leave a, a way to get hold of us. Um, we're going to have problems with communications, I'm sure. Don't worry about that. Just keep trying to get through one way or another. The reason I say it is because, again, times they are changing, as we all know. But if things go well, we plan on seeing a victory. In fact, uh, very, a victory very soon in our favor with regard to uh, perhaps some public announcements from our military figures. Whereas some, some person asked here, uh, don't you think they're getting fed up with it? Yes, they are. You're going to see some people come to a head here real quick, and when they do, the feathers are going to fly. And the other side's going to have to make some decisions then also about what they think they can do. we got to hold them back a little bit longer. Anyway, last three things. I say this every time I leave. God bless the Republic. Death to the New World Order. We shall prevail.